Did you wake up this morning with hair loss living rent free in your mind? Let me help you out. In this video, I'm sharing my personal hair growth tips that have kept my existing hair strong and increased the thickness of my new hair. Number one, I avoid drinking caffeine. Ingesting too much caffeine raises stress hormones such as cortisol. Stress hormones are known to slow hair growth and cause hair loss. In 2021, Harvard researchers discovered that stress hormone equivalents in mice caused hair stem cells to cease production. They believe a similar mechanism plays out in humans. Next is maintaining a good sleep cycle. Studies conducted by the NIH found a strong correlation between poor sleep habits and androgenetic alopecia and alopecia areata. Poor sleep had an effect on scalp and beard hair. Sleep deprivation raised cortisol levels and altered levels of serotonin and DHT, both of which can cause hair loss on the scalp, face, and body. Don't look for results overnight. Hair growth is slowest when sleeping. As your metabolism slows, so does hair production. When applying Rogaine, growth oils, or investing time and resources into inversion therapy or the latest laser cap if your hair hasn't shown progress overnight. It takes weeks, months, even years for some hair loss products and remedies to reach their full potential. Number four is to wash and exfoliate your scalp. I've noticed that the knees and top of the toes are areas where thick, unexfoliated skin can inhibit hair growth. I believe the same goes for your scalp. If you've been extremely gentle with your scalp in order to save hair, you might be doing yourself a disservice. Dead skin can easily clog hair follicles and halt hair growth. A gentle scrub once or twice a week will keep your hair follicles unclogged. You can use Use undiluted white vinegar to exfoliate dead skin and remove mineral buildup. Lately, after shaving my head, I clean my scalp with a Q-tip as I find it effective at removing dead skin. When my hair is cut low, I scrub my scalp every day while in the shower and also before I apply any products or derma roll. Tip five is to condition your hair before bed. Wearing a head wrap or bonnet just isn't an option for many guys, so at night your hair can take a beating from harsh bed sheets or movement. Using a little leave-in conditioner will go a long way in helping your hair survive the night. Number six is manage your stress levels. Stress has been proven in multiple studies to cause hair loss and graying. Many underestimate or don't even notice how stressors in their daily life are contributing to the slow decline of their hair. By learning to deal with your stressors in a healthy way, you can prevent it from impacting your hair and potentially reverse the damage. 7. Find the right stylist. By vetting and building a relationship with someone you trust to take care of your hair, you can work with that particular stylist to ensure all of your needs are met. The stylist can develop a grasp of your hair's history, learning what works and what doesn't work for you. Yeah, get the wrong barber and your hairline could be pushed back way back. Growth tip eight is making sure you have good dietary sources of iron and vitamin D. Vitamin D is a hormone vital for many body functions. It plays a role in multiple growth signaling pathways for your hair follicles. It's also metabolized by the skin to create keratin, the primary protein for hair, skin, and nails. Multiple studies conducted on humans and mice show that low levels of vitamin D are found in conjunction with all forms of alopecia. But vitamin D can be difficult to get if you live in certain locations, have a dark complexion, or suffer from digestive issues that hinder absorption. The minimum amount of vitamin D recommended for healthy adults is 10 micrograms, and many foods are fortified with small amounts. But unfortunately, few foods contain vitamin D in large quantities. And even worse, those sources of vitamin D can come with their own issues. Getting vitamin D from sources such as fish raises your risk of ingesting certain toxins such as mercury. Obtaining vitamin D from eggs exposes you to the high levels of dietary cholesterol. And the easiest source of vitamin D, the sun, is even riskier, as it increases your chances of skin cancer. Many people opt for supplements that contain vitamin D, but these supplements can be difficult to absorb or they might even increase your vitamin D levels too high. And extremely high levels of vitamin D have also been associated with hair loss. Luckily, there is a vegetable that produces high quantities of vitamin D. Mushrooms, which are not a plant but a fungi, produce high levels of vitamin D when exposed to the sun, much like our skin. However, most mushrooms purchased from the grocery store lack the UV exposure to provide adequate levels of vitamin D. Fortunately, there's an easy way to overcome that. According to several studies, when exposed to sunlight or UVB radiation. Store-bought mushrooms produce significant levels of vitamin D, levels high enough to provide you with your daily amount of vitamin D in a single serving of mushrooms. Platin mushrooms, a very common store-bought mushroom, produce 10 micrograms of vitamin D alone when exposed to midday sun for between 10 to 15 minutes. The amount of vitamin D that mushrooms can produce varies based on weather, location, time of day, species, and exposure time. Higher amounts of vitamin D are produced when the gills of the mushrooms are exposed to UVB radiation. Freeze-drying mushrooms before exposure to UVB radiation increase the levels of vitamin D even more. Many store-bought mushrooms produce well over the daily limit when tested in NIH studies. That being said, you can increase the amount of vitamin D2 in your mushrooms by following a few basic steps. Pull the stems off of your mushrooms and cut them into small pieces. Place them on a pan 
and put them in a secure location where they'll be exposed to midday sun for between two to three hours. When you bring the mushrooms inside, you should notice that they should be considerably darker, much like our skin when exposed to sunlight for long periods of time. I dehydrate the mushrooms. I don't have a dehydrator, so I use a small oven. I spread the mushrooms evenly across the tray. I put the oven on convection, which allows the heat to circulate evenly around the mushrooms, and I leave for between five to six hours until the mushrooms become extremely hard and brittle. I then pulse the mushrooms in a blender until they reach the consistency of a fine like powder, similar to spices you find in the grocery store. You can store your vitamin D infused mushroom powder in a mason jar for up to three months in a dry, cool, dark area. You can also mix the mushroom powder with other seasonings such as Italian seasoning, garlic powder, or onion powder, or you can simply sprinkle it on your favorite foods such as salad, pizzas, sandwiches, or anything that really floats your boat. The enriched vitamin D powder will not only assist you in hair growth, but can help you to ward off a host of chronic diseases and age with growth. Since I've begun to use my vitamin D fortified mushroom powder, I've noticed a significant difference, not only in my hair growth, but my sleep as well as my mood. Rosemary is an evergreen shrub with leaves similar to him. Rosemary oil is found to be just as effective as minoxidil in fighting androgen-dependent hair loss. In 1998, a randomized double-blind controlled trial of 86 alopecia areata patients, lasting seven months and with follow-ups at month three and seven, massaged a mixture of essential oils and carrier oils into their scalp daily. Of the group using the mix of essential oils and carrier oils, 44% saw significant improvements. But due to the use of multiple agents in the study, it was difficult to see the role of rosemary oil in promoting hair growth. In 2012, rosemary extract was shown to inhibit DHT from binding to androgen receptors in rats who had previously lost their hair due to testosterone treatments. And in 2015, a randomized control trial found rosemary to be just as effective as minoxidil at the six-month period. People with high blood pressure and people who are pregnant should consult a physician before using rosemary oil or rosemary extract. When buying rosemary, try and make sure the source is organic and not just an extract mixed with other products. Verify the source whenever possible. Biotin plays a major role in the creation of keratin, the primary protein of the hair follicle. Keratin provides structure, stability, and strength to hair. Despite claims of biotin regrowing people's hair, there's little evidence supporting biotin for hair loss in healthy individuals outside of biotin deficiency. The adult recommendation is 30 micrograms of biotin per day, but there's no upper limit to how much you can take. Your body will urinate any excess biotin it doesn't need. In studies where individuals recovered hair with biotin tablets, patients suffered from a genetic condition were on medication that depleted biotin or followed a diet that caused issues with biotin levels. The signs and symptoms of biotin deficiency show gradually and can include thinning scalp hair, loss of all hair on the body, scaly red rashes, skin infections, brittle nails, as well as eye, metabolic, and neurological issues. When looking at biotin supplements, read the ingredient list and make sure the bottle is marked with the seal for third-party testing. These seals confirm independent testing and evaluation of a supplement and ensure they are handled properly. When overusing biotin, some people reported rashes or acne, and there's evidence of excessive supplement use interfering with medical tests, particularly of the thyroid, so it's important to cease biotin supplementation a few weeks before any medical test. Biotin supplements can also interact with medications, so let your doctor know about any supplements you may be taking. In the end, the best over-the-counter source of biotin is from your diet. Small to moderate amounts of biotin are found throughout foods people consume daily. Unless you've been diagnosed with the biotin deficiency, save your money and focus on nutrition. If you think you may be deficient, save yourself some time and get a test to measure your levels. Make sure the test is a urine test as blood levels of biotin fluctuate throughout the day. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.